Hi everyone and welcome to our second video in the BioPsych unit. Today we're going to be talking about um, the neuron, right? So in the first video we talked about the nervous system, the endocrine system, we looked at like the big um, kind of macro um, idea of the nervous system and now we're going to look at all the little teeny tiny pieces which are the neurons. Um, and today we're going to focus on the structure of the neuron and then in the next video we're going to talk more about how the neurons communicate with each other. So we're going to separate it in two different parts. So what you see in front of you is a neuron, right? Uh, and there's some basic uh, units or some basic parts of neurons that you need to know, but there's also some different types of neurons that you should know. So first, neuron is a cell that communicates electrically and chemically. So when neurons communicate to another neuron, right, or how the nervous system talks to itself, right, to send messages all over your body, those messages are sent electrically and chemically. There are a couple different types of neurons that exist in your body. These are not all the neurons that we're going to talk about that exist, in, but the ones that you have to focus on for AP Psych. So the first one is sensory neurons. And sensory neurons, their job is to carry the information incoming from the sensory receptors. So they carry their information into the brain, right? And then you have motor neurons, and motor neurons take the message that's going out of the brain, down the spinal cord, and to the muscles. So sensory neurons go in, and motor neurons go out. And the, the sensory and motor neurons also have another name, and those are called afferent and efferent. So sensory neurons are afferent neurons, and motor neurons are efferent neurons. And the way you can remember this is the word same, right? Sensory, afferent, motor, efferent. So sensory neurons go into the spinal cord and brain, motor neurons go out. But there's one more type of neuron that you should know about, and these are inner neurons. So these are neurons uh, that, commute, that are in the spinal cord, and they help connect the motor and the sensory neurons, okay? Now, yesterday when we were talking about uh, the reflexes, right, we talked about how reflexes don't go to the brain, right? And so reflexes stop in the inner neurons. But most messages, what happens is they come in through sensory, they go to the inner neurons, to the brain, and then back to the inner neurons, out through motor neurons. Okay. Glial cells, um, I want you to know because they basically are kind of like the janitor of your neurons, right? So they take care of it. They support it. They clean it. They remove all the waste. They make sure that it's healthy. Okay. So glial cells are another cell for you to know about when talking about neurons. I like this picture because I think it does a good job of, of showing afferent and efferent neurons. So if you take a look, what you'll see is that this is the person touching it, and then this green is the sensory or afferent neuron, and it is going up into the spinal cord, and then you'll see that this is the spinal cord, this is the inner neuron, and now it's going back out with the efferent neuron, which is the motor neuron, to the muscle, right? Because motor neurons control your muscle movement, and then as you see here, the muscle contracts. So you have efferent goes in and motor goes out. Okay, so I'm going to talk about all the different parts of the neuron. As you can see, there's little lines coming out of all the different pieces there. So um, for each part that I talk about, you need to write down the name of it and the definition and the, all the extra details that I give you. So the first thing are dendrites, right? Dendrites are those little like branch-looking things on the side there, right? And really what they do is they listen, right? They receive the messages from other cells. So they are waiting for a message from the cell before it, and then the cell, then they'll send a message, then they'll wait again, then they'll send, then they'll wait, right? And there can be thousands of these on every cell body, okay? The cell body is this portion right here, right? And that's the nucleus. So the dendrites are all these branch-looking things. And literally, the dendrites are what start the electrical impulse. So remember how I said it communicates electrically and chemically? So the neuron or the dendrites start the electrical impulse when they receive enough messages from the previous cell. And we'll talk about uh, in more detail what that means, but I need you to know that that's where the message starts. The next thing that I want you to know about is the axon, right? The axon is what takes the message from the cell body to the uh, end. It takes the message away to the other um, end of the neuron. So it listens to the message and then it sends the message away from the cell body to the other end of the neuron to then send to another neuron after that. Each neuron only has one axon, okay? And axons can be short or long depending on where the neuron is in your body and what the function of the neuron is. And action, axons are what take the electrical impulse from the dendrite. Okay, the next thing that you have to know is the myelin sheath, right? That's this guy right over here. 
The myelin sheath looks like it's pointing to the axon, but what it's actually pointing to is that white fatty kind of cushion looking thing over the axon, right? So the myelin sheath, its job is kind of to protect the axon or more, more specifically to protect the message in the axon, right? So the myelin sheath acts as a, as a insulator and allows the message to run very quickly, okay, down the axon. When the myelin sheath is not present, the muscle has, or the, the, um, the message has a hard time moving through the axon. And so then that can delay the message or slow down the message or prevent the message from sending completely. And there is a disorder called multiple sclerosis. And this is when your myelin sheath, uh, it's an autoimmune disorder. So your body kind of attacks its own myelin sheath and it degenerates to the point where you lose control of your muscles, but you still have control um, of other parts of your, you know, um, other things. And then as the disease progresses, you lose more and more control of those muscles because you lose more and more of the myelin sheath, right? Okay, something I want to point out in this guy, and these really, the job, we're going to talk about the nodes of RANVA tomorrow. Um, we talk about how neurons communicate, but I want you to know that this little space in between one myelin sheath and the next on the axon is called the nodes of RANVA. And that is where, um, the electrical impulse kind of gets its charge before it moves on to the next section, um, kind of like this little sausage hot dog link looking thing. Okay, so if you look here, a couple of things have been added. One, this shows you the direction of the neural impulse. So remember how I said that it's electrical signal? So the electrical signal starts at the dendrites, goes to the cell body, and then goes through the axon, axon to the terminal branches at the end of the axon, okay? The end of the axon is where the chemical messages are stored. So once the, the electric signal gets to the end, it can't actually send an electrical signal over to the next neuron. It has to turn chemical and then back electrical again. And those chemical messengers are called neurotransmitters, and they all have different jobs, and we're going to spend some time talking about those too. The electrical signal, like I said, it ends here. And sometimes these are also called terminal branches, terminal buttons, or the axon terminal. So you'll hear a bunch of different um, terms when referring to those, but they all do the same thing, okay? And again, uh, this is just another example. They've added the cell body that I already talked about right here. So you have dendrites, cell body, axon, myelin sheath, terminal branches, right? These are the major parts that you need to know about the structure of a neuron in order to understand eventually how it communicates with the next neuron and then the neuron after that and after that and after that. One, the one last thing I want to talk about is how information flows through neurons. So I want you to know that the electrical impulse only flows in one direction. So it doesn't flow from the dendrites to the axon to the terminal branches and then back up. It only flows the singular way. So the dendrites hear, they listen, and the axons take the message away from the cell body to the next neuron, right? So if you look here, you have dendrites collect, the cell body kind of integrates and figures out what's going on, and then the axon is what sends the electrical signal all the way down to the next cell, okay? So that is all for now, AP Psychos, and remember, psychology is flippin' awesome.